I am ranked number one. One! That means I'm the best. Born in 1902, Len Johnson was a very good boxer. He learned his trade at the traveling boxing booth and from his father, a former sailor from Sierra Leone. He settled in Manchester, very skillful and light on his toes, with an educated left hand and a slippery defense and was considered Britain's best middleweight of the late 20s and early 30s. He was never allowed to fight for an official title. A black man, even a British-born black man like Johnson, could not hold a British belt. Frustrated with the lack of opportunities, Johnson retired in 1933. He turned pro in 1920 at the age of 18. Six foot one with a 74 and a half inch reach, a middleweight. I went through the resume, a lot of the names I'm not familiar with. I'm not that much of a history buff, you know. I don't know a lot of the names. There was a couple I did pick out though. Pat McAllister was the Irish champion. He drew with Pat and then TKO'd him later. Pat was no slouch apparently. He actually stopped McAllister a couple of times. Here we go, look at this result here. He stopped Ted Kid Lewis, who, if you, you're not gonna take my testimony, maybe you'll take Mike Tyson's. I knew Ted Kid Lewis, I knew him quite really? well, because he lived to a, a fair old age. Perhaps the greatest fight ever came out of here. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, even though you have Lunningan, you know, but you rate a fight upon his longevity, and for years, Ted Kid Lewis has been beating the greatest American fighter. For years, he's been the number one in the world for years. Not just like, he, he won the title like four times, three times, and it's just mm -hmm. unbelievable. And the guys he had to fight, Jack Britton, Mickey Jack Walker, mm -hmm. Benny Leonard, the who's who of boxing back then, the greatest of the greats, and he still prevailed number one. Perhaps the greatest British fighter from off the British shores, according to Mike Tyson. And Len stopped him in 10 rounds. He did capture the Commonwealth title in Australia, the vacant British Empire title in Australia. He was recognised in Australia as the Commonwealth champion, British Empire champion, but not by the National Sporting Club or other authorities in Britain. Now, the National Sporting Club is basically Lord Lonsdale's baby. Lonsdale is the man behind the Lonsdale belt. Three victories at any Three championship victories at any given weight will entitle you to keep the belt outright. Now, the National Sporting Club was the dominant club. There was other sporting clubs all around the country who had their own champions saying they were the best in Britain. But the Lonsdale franchise and the National Sporting Club fought all the pretenders off and they were the top dogs, so to speak. The National Sporting Club, who controlled boxing, they became defunct in the early 1930s and in came the British Boxing Board of Control. Len Johnson, he wrote to Lord Lonsdale and the National Sporting Club and he was asking if he would be allowed to perform there and perhaps fight for a belt because they used to organise boxing contests and obviously that was where the prestige and where the most lucrative prize money was. There was an article written by Lord Lonsdale which explained how he turned down Johnson's ponderings over whether he would be able to fight at the National Sporting Club. He said, I am very sorry, Lonsdale wrote, because he is a very fine fellow, a really nice man with a splendid personality and a splendid boxer. But there it is. This information was found in Len Johnson's scrapbooks. There was also a postcard addressed to Mr. Lenin which obviously was Len Johnson, just some bad spelling, from the Ku Klux Klan of Britain with the postscript, White is for purity, keep Britain pure. After talks with Winston Churchill at the Home Office, the legality of boxing was made conditional on having no intercolored contests. And for those who don't know, Winston Churchill, who was the Home Secretary before becoming Prime Minister, and being maybe the most popular British Prime Minister ever because of the exploits of World War II. He also vetoed Jack Johnson from defending his world title against Britain's British champion, Bombardier Billy Wells, on the grounds of no intercolored contests. 
He did, however, win the Northern Area light heavyweight title. They let him keep that, you know. Not the same prestige as a British title, obviously, but they did let him have that. Very nice of them, I guess. He fought Len Harvey, who he had beaten previously, and lost a 15-rounder in a fight that was billed as the British middleweight championship, but not recognised by the British Boxing Board of Control due to the colour bar. Well, I guess he didn't win anyway, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. That was in 1932. The color bar was removed officially in 1947. And the first black British champion was Dick Turpin, Randolph Turpin's brother. Randolph Turpin obviously defeated Sugar Ray Robinson to become world middleweight champion. And Randolph is still one of the most celebrated British boxers in the history of the sport. But not being able to make any headway, Len Johnson, he retired in 1933 and he set up a boxing booth which spawned the likes of Benny Lynch, who became a flyweight champion. Benny Lynch, born in Ireland, raised in Scotland, became flyweight champion. And his story is quite remarkable in itself as well. It's... um. A riveting read, let's just say that. In 1945, Len became a communist and between 1947 and 1962, he stood for local elections six times in Manchester. Obviously, he didn't win. There was <laughs> no black MPs of any prominence back then. It's just what it was. He did help organise the 1945 Pan-African Conference in Manchester. He became great friends with Paul Robeson, the singer and civil rights activist, and organised Britain's Let Paul Robeson Sing campaign after the American authorities confiscated Robeson's passport. He became increasingly radicalised with the inequality in society. He worked for the Civil Defence Corps in the Second World War. He used to tour the country with his boxing booth. Quite a remarkable man. And he died in 1974, age 71. Len Johnson, a pioneer, a British black boxer, paved the way for the likes of Anthony Joshua, Kell Brook, Eubank Jr., Eubank Sr., Nigel Benn, David Hay, James DeGale, Tony Bellew, who I believe has some mixed ethnicity in his genetic makeup, Cal Yafai, although not directly from African descent, he would have been subject to the color bar too back then. I thought he was definitely worth making a video about, and here's that video. Peace.